in your presence, Father, and to hear thy word, to be fed from your, your great table, O oh Lord. Father, you are worthy of all our praise, and you're worthy to be honored and glorified this day, Lord. Father, you've heard each and every request, Lord. You see the, my sisters and brothers, Lord, that are suffering in their bodies, Lord. You know each and every detail of those situations, Father. You hear the unspoken requests, Father, as well as the spoken requests, Lord. No detail is left short of your eye, Lord. You know each and every detail, Father. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would extend your hand of grace and mercy into those needs. Father, be with us in this service this day. Allow us to lift our, our voices in song and praise unto you, Father, and to glorify you, Lord, and lift your name up. For, Father, you've done so much for us, Lord. You continually bless us each and every day, Lord. Father, we're thankful for this opportunity, Lord, for this place, Lord, that you've given us and this day and time and hour that we live in, Lord, that we can stand in your presence again, Lord, and to hear that which you have and that you can mold us and shape us into the body of people that you would have us to be, Lord. Father, we're so thankful unto you. Bless your servant as he comes forth this evening, Lord. Give him the words to speak, Lord. Allow those words to sink deep within our hearts, Father. And I pray, O oh Lord, that you'd give us clear understanding of that which you have. Allow us to carry it with us in our daily walk, dear Father. Just be with us in this service and have your way. We ask all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Thank you, brother. <coughs>
If I had a thousand lives to live, I'd give them all to the Lord. He's been so good to me, that is the least I could afford. He's made the good times outnumber the bad, and the best friend that I've ever had. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I just want to thank you, Lord, for every time you heard me pray. I just want to thank you, Lord, for always being there. When I was so down and out, you came along. If I had a thousand lives to live, I'd give them all to the Lord. He's been so good to me, that is the least I could afford. He's made the good times outnumber the bad, been the best friend that I've ever had. I just want to thank you. Thank you, Lord, for always being there. When I was so down and out, you came along and made me want to shout. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh. How about the young sisters? Would you have a song for us? And how about Sister Michelle after that? Let's 
storm will soon be gone. Just lift your eyes to heaven and take to His hand. When the storm is at its worst, just know it's in His place. Sometimes we question the rain when we wonder what we've done To desert these storms when there's nowhere to run Just keep pressing forward, give praise to God on high You may be in a storm, but the sun is gonna shine Don't be afraid to see the clouds start rolling in. Just keep on fighting and put your faith in Him. Let Him be your anchor. Let the storm rage on. Though your ship is torn apart, the storm will soon. Sister Michelle, if you would come on, then how about Sister Melody after that? And now I want to 
for that. All right, you may be seated. Sister Melody, and how about Brother James Terrell after that? Oh, 
Thank you, Sister, for that. All right, Brother James. Then Sister Drusy, have about you after that. sing a song about every time I come up here but he truly did reach down really far for me <clears throat> once my soul was astray from the heavenly way I was rich and vile as could be But my Savior in love gave me peace from above. When he reached down his hand for me. When the Savior reached down for me. He had to reach way down for me. I was lost and undone without God or His Son. When He reached down His hand for me. I was near to despair when he came to me there and he showed me that I could go free then he lifted my feet gave me joy that's complete when he reached down his hand for me when the Savior reached down for me he had to lost and undone without God or his son when he reached down his hand for me how my heart doth rejoice since I made my choice from the tempest to him now I flee there to lean on his arm safe secure from all harm since he reached down his hand me. When the Savior reached down for me, he had to reach way down for me. I was lost. Without God or His Son, when He reached down His hand 
Sister Drusy and Sister Diane Nelson, how about you after that? Thank you, sister, for that. All right, sister. And Sister Sharon, how about you after that?
you, sisters, for that. All right, Sister Sharon. Becky, can you come up? Charles got drafted. Guess what happens? What I get. <laughs> Wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace in a mansion bright and blessed. He'll prepare for us a place when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be! Oh, when we all
thank you all for that. Thank each one of you for your songs. Again, I look forward to what the Lord has for us from his precious word. I'll turn the service over to Brother Allen at this time. Thank you again, Brother Bud. Greetings to everyone. Appreciate you being here. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we're grateful to you again that you have given us this opportunity to be able to come together and to meet together, Lord, for one purpose, and for one purpose only, is to serve and to worship you. And we ask now your presence upon each one as we go into this part of the service, Lord, after we've been out of the worship service singing the songs and all of which that you have provided for us. We pray now, Lord, your hand to be upon each one and that it be upon me to speak forth your word in clarity and with understanding, Lord, let it be done. May you be praised for it all. We ask these things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. Thankful for the opportunity to be able to stand before you again. Give praise unto his great name. This is part number eight. I didn't know just how many there were. Seem like that time passes so fast that just kind of get up in in the hour that you're in to where that uh, you don't realize how far you've gone. But we appreciate the Lord and for His wonderful grace that He's shown us. I know that I mentioned this morning of questions that had been asked of me, which I didn't get into, because whenever I realized what time it was, it was 20 to 12, and so I hadn't got into my scripture in Ephesians yet, because I, I'd said that uh, after that that we will drop these other scriptures and leave just the one up there that I have which is Second Peter chapter 3 so there's just so much tied up in scripture of the hour that we're living in that it it's never been this way before we've never been in an hour like the hour we're living in I know the Bible talks about uh, leaders in the last days that they will be lying at one table and another, and it just seems that truth can't be found in the leadership around the world. One is trying to get more than the other one, but it seems like that 
uh, they're never challenged on the things that they do say that are wrong. It just, it's politics, just politics. If, uh, if he's in the business world and people told the things that they did in the business world, they would be fired. But in the political world, that is just a, another thing. Uh, the word impeachment don't even mean that, mean that anymore because we had a president that was impeached, but he stayed in office. And it, it's something that man's word is no good anymore. It used to be a saying that a man is as good as his word. And that don't leave much to, to envy the leadership in the world. I put it in the world because it is seemingly trying to be a government that is governed by the world, by a body that has never done anything, which is the UN. The UN has never done anything. They've never settled a battle. They've never done anything but take money and place people in there, head, heads of the UN that are uh, as much as, there are some words I could use, but I don't want to. Thank you. Brother Bud, there is uh, what the world would think of as charlatans. And that is not very good. You've got to put one out or one will retire and then another one take his place with just his better ideas as the one before him, but yet the United States pays 26% of what the UN gets. And there used to be signs all, all up and down the road, get us out of the UN. You don't see that anymore. But it used to be, and I'm not talking about 50 years ago, 20 to 30 years ago, they were signs, get us out of the UN. But that is a, a thing that is not even mentioned anymore because they have a body of people that is drawing from each other. And whenever it comes to that, Israel is left on the bottom, and really they are without friends now. It's just a, it's just a body that it looked like that one time the United States was going to stand with Israel. But that is a, a long gone fact now. That they're really going to make a stand for Israel. And I got, a, got an email the other day from Brother Wells that he sent me that Concerning John Kerry, John Kerry don't want to, when you get out of this country, don't want the name Israel mentioned. If you ever mention anything about Israel, he'll drop it off and go to something else. Because he's the, the worst friend that Israel ever had as far as the position that he's in. I'm talking about Hillary Clinton and all the rest of them, that he is the worst.
because he's ready to drop Israel like a hot potato. And yet, when he gets around certain people in the United States, and these are things that he says in other countries, he just denies them even the, their existence because he don't want the name mentioned. But that is not a worry for me. It is bad for the country in which that we live, but it's not a worry for me. But whenever everybody drops Israel, then God will take them up. And at Temple Mount is not going to be shared with the Muslims, no matter what they say. It's just not going to, it's not going to happen. Whenever the time comes, it will be gone, and whenever the time comes, Muslimism will be gone. Brother Jackson spoke very strongly about that. And one of its defeats is, I believe, soon to be, which will be when Israel gets their land back. All those around them, including Egypt, Iraq, and Syria, all of those nations there is going to be willing to share that country with Israel. And going all the way up to the Euphrates River, And in the scripture, we, we find that only one time has Israel ever owned that. And that was in David and Solomon's rule. Whenever they ruled, Israel got their land. Now then, uh, whenever those around about them are defeated, then... Israel gets her not only her land back, but she gets her temple ground back. And I I know where that is where it's gonna to have to come from. It's gonna to have to come from Judah and Jerusalem. It's where the Bible speaks of. And if you look at the Middle East now, you see that neither one of them would be capable of doing so. And they won't be capable of doing so when it happens except God is with them and the angel of the Lord before them. And then the next big thing that's going to be defeated that will defeat Muslimism is when those nations of, of Russia and, and her counterparts, Iran and all that are Libya and all of them that are with her, Turkey and so on, because these are, many of them are Gentile nations that has got names from, uh, from the very beginning, the Noah's three sons. Togomar and all of them were sons of, grandsons of Noah. So, Whenever, of which Togomar is Turkey. These nations that are around about them are going to be defeated, and that's not going to leave, that's going to take out the whole thing of the Muslims' holy places. Mecca and all of them are in that. So we find that Egypt is going to be friends with Israel. Syria is going to be friends with Israel. Assyria, I should say, which includes more than just Syria. Then Saudi Arabia and all will bring their animal sacrifices to them. So that will defeat Muslimism whenever all of this happens because that, that is the legs they stand on. 
It don't mean that there will be, it won't be factions. Maybe of them even in the United States of where they're getting more power all the time. Even in Kentucky, they were talking about the Sharia law, which the Sharia law means that a man can beat his wife. She don't listen to him and, and his children and even kill them. So I just leading up to what that I want to talk about here tonight. And I want to go to Second Peter chapter three. Verse, well, I've got three through twelve, or or four through twelve, but I want to go on up and get these other verses too with that. This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you in both, which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. Somewhere this has been told to them before. Because he's saying by the way of remembrance. That you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets. See, they were spoken before. And of the commandments of us, the apostles of our Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, scoffers walking after their own lust. So it has to do with something of of a desire that they walk in this manner. Scoffers, of course, is meaning people that have their own ideas, that are not willing to adhere to a ministry that God has raised up for the hour. And saying, where is the promise of his coming? Some of that has already been denied. 2004 has passed. It means nothing anymore. It's just a figure of speech. But I'm saying that that ended... Your two days. And I will not give up on that. That was the end of two days because it was counted off by our brother, Brother Jackson, from the time of the crucifixion. And he was very particular to point out the time of when the crucifixion took place. And he never did give it more than a year or a year and a half that it could be different. But then whenever he set the time, he said, this is the time. Because he said, this is the only time that there was an eclipse. According to the scientists, an eclipse Ten years that away and ten years this other way from 33 A.D. And we know that when Jesus was crucified that there was an eclipse. God shut the sun off. But 
that was that was enough indication besides all the other things that were done to prove the time of when it happened. Because the temple, the curtains in the temple were rent from top to bottom. Whenever this happened, whenever this took place, to show that God had taken away His presence from that temple then. Judaism had had their chance for the time that was because they said, let His blood be upon us and our children. And I said, this is a part of that. This verse here appoint, uh, points to a part of that. Saying, where is the promise of His coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were before the creation. Did you realize that whenever you deny scriptural evidence, then you become a scoffer, scoffing at what has evidently been set up. For this they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. Talking about the flood. But the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word are kept in store reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. When I read down here just a little bit farther, this has been somewhat a question in my mind of how this is going to come about. Said again, the seventh verse, But the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. That judgment will happen, and I will get into that, that judgment will happen right after Armageddon. Now it has been said and it's been preached that uh, this is going to be an ongoing thing that it's not going to just happen all at once. But that's not that's not what the Bible says. We're going to look at Matthew 24 and see here just a minute. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. One day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. It is, it is funny or ironic that he would mention this in the same verses of which that he mentioned there would be scoffers. Because your 2,000 year period of time ended in 2004 and a half, which means the middle of 2005.
because you got to get to the end of 2004 before you can go in, go into 2005 into the middle of it then you've got four and a, then you've got your four and a half years 2004 and a half Because when we come to the year 2000, you've just ended 19 and 99. And it takes that one full year before you have a year that has gone. If you didn't understand that, that's the way that it is. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness. But his long suffering to us were not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. This ends up the seventh year. This is what it's talking about. It ends it up. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. This ends up your seven year period of time. in the which the heavens shall pass away with their great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, the earth also, and the works thereof, works that are therein shall be burned up. This was what that is, was... Uh, Not a doubt, but a question in my mind of, of the heavens shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth and the works therein shall be burned up. I could understand that, but I was over it, Brother Steve's, a couple weeks ago, and and he had a film on space junk. And you wouldn't realize, I mean, it was a 3D film, and I was dodging part of the time because it was coming after me. <laughs> One chip of paint off of a vessel can knock out a satellite because that satellite is more or less sitting there and the chip of paint is moving through the air at 17,500 miles an hour. And whenever, whenever you're talking about space junk, here's what you have. Millions of pieces in the heavens. The elements shall melt with fervent heat. God will get rid of the space junk. That's your elements. Because He's not going to leave the traces of man even in the atmosphere. I think it's 220 miles or so to where that you can, uh, to where that the space, where things are flying in space. And Brother David found this for me. Of course, you won't see it in 3D. You won't have to dodge it. 
But he looked it up and found it, Brother Steve, on here, and here's what you're looking at. It is an animation. Fifty years ago. Six, five, four, This is a short film, two and a half minutes, because it's just a, a trace. See this You can see what's out there. Millions of pieces of space junk. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. That's... That's talking about the earthly atmosphere, the heavens that it's talking about. That's not talking about God's abode. Nothing ever gets there except the saints whenever they go up. So, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. That God is get it, going to get rid of all of man's works here on earth and in the heavens that he may clean up outer space. And that is what happens when anything that's out there comes back into the atmosphere. It burns up. You realize that, don't you? Elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. All the works of man. The, I'm not talking about things that man will be able to use in the world to come. Because there's a lot of good uses 
that God is going to leave. Why would it say that they will turn their swords into plowshares? Brother Oscar, your tractor will still be here. I'm not saying you'll be driving it. <laughs> but the good things that man has invented through the years will be left. Swords will be turned into plowshares and, and so on. Because whenever God burns the earth, Everything is not going to be burned or you'd have no flesh left. But it, the Bible says the cities of the nation shall fall. You'll get rid of all these old rat holes. These city dumps. Because it said there'd be earthquakes, great earthquakes. The mountains will fall just like Mount Etna over there now is on fire. And it says that your islands will flee away, which the islands are volcanic. They come up from the sea. I'll finish reading this. Seeing then that all of these things shall be dissolved. Dissolved. No trace of them. When you dissolve anything, you have put much heat on it to bring it back into its original state. Seeing what, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons? What are they talking about this morning? What manner of persons? Ought you to be, or ought that I should be? in all holy conversation and godliness. This don't just include the congregation, this includes the ministry. And the ministry, first of all, how's an imperfect ministry going to perfect, a, make a people perfect? How is imperfect preaching going to make a perfect people? <laughs> Scriptures is not man's idea. It wasn't that Isaiah just got up one day and started writing. But you look at the Scripture and you compare Scripture with Scripture, you will find that it's not out of place. Looking for looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, looking for it. Being glad that it is going to come. Hastening it. 
Bring it on. Are we going to just sing the song, Wait a little longer, please, Jesus? God's got a schedule. A schedule that He's got to meet. He's got to meet it because God can't lie. But I don't know it. I don't know when that schedule is going to happen. But I know that we're close. Looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God. We're in the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and that is the space junk. Because the devil has been in control with this earthly element around it. We know that from chapter 12 of Revelation because he is cast down to the earth. He no longer has his lofty position. What do you think is talking about in Revelation there in chapter, I have to think a minute. Chapter 13, that lamb beast speaks as a dragon. It didn't do it at first. And this is one of the questions. When we go back to the to the beast of Revelation 13. That beast of Revelation 13 is guided by the devil, but it works among people. That's where it said it come up out of the sea. That is people. But this is also a description of the area of where it come because it was around the Mediterranean. We know it had seven heads and ten horns, but you look into the 17th chapter, it tells you where it comes from. The city with seven hills, which gives a description of Rome. But whenever you're talking about the seven heads in Revelation 13, you're talking about one of the heads that was wounded the wound come through Martin Luther and men of that caliber in that time on up through Wesley and all on into the 20th century but then it goes back in the 40s to being what it was But it don't reach its full potential of what it was until you get into the last half of the week. These things are not murky 
to the revelation of God. It had changed. I want to go to, before I go into that anymore, I want to go to Matthew 25 to show you what I was talking about a while ago. Matthew 24, I mean. Starting verse 27, this is talking of the bride leaving here. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be as the lightning, which is a quick thing. It goes from the east to the west. As the lightning lightens the earth, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be for the bride. He's not going to knock on everybody's house door and say, Are you ready? No, whenever he comes, that bride will have made herself ready. And before you can twinkle your eye, you will be changed. It's not as this bunch of preachers talk about it. It could happen tonight. No, it won't happen tonight. It can happen for individuals tonight that they can be gone. I'm not talking about raptured. They can... You or I may not live till morning. But then the dead in Christ shall rise first. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. The carcass, as I said this morning, the carcass is the Word of God of what that the bride of Christ is feasting on. Immediately, after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Immediately. That has nothing to do with that 30-day period of time. The 30-day period of time is, is the judgment of God upon this earth because the earth will reel and rock as a drunkard and the elements that we were talking about shall be burned. But it's not, a, it's not just a gradual time. Immediately is not gradual.
And it says, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened. Sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. It takes that 30-day period of time for everything to begin to settle down for that next period of time, which is 45 days. Because it said, Blessed is he that waits till the 1330 Five days, 75 days after the tribulation shall man, shall all these things be settled and the sheep people shall be brought into their place. Then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And he and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory immediately after the tribulation of those days God is not going to give wicked mankind 30 days to live within that 30 day period of time is spoken of by Daniel that is for the earth to settle down on its axis again because it's got to come back into the 360-day period of time. And I would like to say to these preachers that say the only one that will have scars in heaven will be Jesus Christ in, in the eternal age, I'd like to say that is not right. Because that was put on there by a curse. Cursed is he that hangs on the tree. But he will have scars to show those Jews. But there won't be a reminder by scars whenever he sets up, up, uh, sets up his kingdom. The curses that has been placed on mankind will all be gone. The curses, the scars upon this earth will all be gone. It will be like it was in the Garden of Eden whenever God rested that seventh day. He said it was all good. And we always relate that tree of knowledge to be evil, but it was a tree of knowledge of good and evil. If man had never sinned, the good part would have been there. And had never been 
an illegitimate child. Never. Because that knowledge would have took care of that curse that come upon womankind and man. I'm getting into a lot of things here. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in, in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. When they see Him coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, that's when He comes back with His bride. And we could say glory too. Because the thing about it is, we have our new bodies. The old man, with his deeds, have all passed away. Whenever you're born again, you become new, but your body has not been changed. But whenever this takes place, your body and your spirit, everything is changed together. I could say something here, but I won't be a fool. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of the trumpet. They, what is that trumpet for? resurrection he will send his angels with a great trumpet that trumpet is to wake up the dead that has been laying there in in the earth during the seven year period of time that is talking of great multitude of jews and of foolish virgins That part has nothing to do with bride people. They shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Yes, this is his own agenda. Man, as I said this morning, man is wrestling with the idea that there's going to be a, that there is going to be a temple sitting there with what we know is the mosque of Omar and then that other mosque that sits there with it which is the Al-Axis mosque which Mohammed is supposed to come back to when he raises from the dead no He will be with the element at the end of the thousand year period of time. You say, well, you're judging. I am. No murderers is going to be there. Man, 
even murdered his mother-in-law. While I'm in this, I'll go back to Revelation 13. And I stood up on the sand of the sea, and so a beast rise up out of the sea. Having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his head the name of the name of blasphemy. Let me read that over again case that I read it wrong. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea having seven heads and ten horns and upon his horns ten crowns and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. That is starting out your old Roman empire of which that Daniel saw. But this is but this is speaking of its growth. It grows and to be what that the Bible said it would be. Even in the book of Daniel, starting in the second chapter of the book of Daniel, where it talks about uh, the dream that Nebuchadnezzar has. But then we find that the end of the dream that there's uh, that there is a stone cut out of the mountain. And whenever this stone is taken out of the mountain, it is brought down to where that it uh, where that it crushes the beast at its feet, showing Rome. And then it crushes the rest of them to where that it is carried away by the wind. There will be no more seven-headed beast in the millennium. Never will it rise again. You see the end of it in, in the 19th chapter of the book of Revelation. The beast and the false prophet is of which that this is speaking of the, the fall and the rise of the Roman Empire. That's why it says in Revelation 17, the beast that was and is not, yet it is. The spirit of that thing never did die. All it done was go down into the earth. But when Daniel, when Daniel sees it in the seventh chapter, he sees the the beast having ten horns, and then another little horn comes up. Because when he sees it, it don't have seven heads. Just the four heads. But the seven heads is speaking of the succession of the Roman Empire.
It goes from your Caesars into 96 of when Trajan and all of them begin their reign from 96 on up to 180-something. Five kings rule, and then he said in Revelation 17, one is. And one is yet to come. And when he comes, he must continue but a short space. But then when you see the beast in Revelation 17, you don't see the little horn there because... The ten, ten horns that come up there destroy its evidence. Because the Roman Catholic Church is destroyed for those ten horns, they hate the whore. Not because they're righteous. But it's because of the one that is now ruler, which is your, which is the Pope turned political that don't remember his fathers because he, he feels in chapter 11 of Daniel that he is God. It also speaks of that in the 13th chapter. Then whenever you, you see him here, he's got ten crowns, which is that ten-horned beast, because they rule in the early years of their reign as kings. may be confusing to some of you. They rule as kings, but when you see them in Revelation chapter 17, they don't have crowns because they receive power as kings one hour with the beast. That's why they're not called kings now. Prime ministers. But still in that hour, they will be ruling as kings. Just one hour with the beast, just a short, short length of time do they have that, and God raises them up to get rid of that Catholic system. And it goes ahead at the end of that chapter 17 to tell you what the waters were. The water were people and multitudes and tongues. But when Daniel sees it, that little horn, that little horn comes up along about the 8th century. And then he begins to take authority and he takes out three kings. That is history. As Daniel sees him in the, in the 7th chapter. He takes out three kings, but he's that little horn. Which don't happen till around 1,000. But those seven 
kings that is mentioned there in Revelation 17, that is five of them were fallen and one is, which was, which was uh, Constantine. And one is yet to come, which will be Charlemagne, which he begins to put more emphasis on the Pope. That's funny how that when all of this comes about that history records it all. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard and his feet as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. See, he's taken on his predecessors, predecessors which would have been in the beginning of the kingdom of Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar, then the Medes and the Persians. Then after that, the king of Greece, which was Alexandria, Alexander. See, it takes on the likeness of all these, which is the mouth of a lion. And these other cats. Feet of a bear, mouth is a mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and seat and great authority. That is talking about the beast. Gave the beast of his power and great authority. And then he says, I see one of his heads as it were wounded unto death, which happened along about 1400 into 1500 on into 1700. By 1798, the Pope is no longer in power, but that spirit never dies, which makes it the beast that was and is not, and yet it is. And I saw one of his heads that is, as it is wounded unto death. What, what your prophecy preachers say, he's going to be shot in the head. But they've got a false prophet and a beast boat. Shoot him in the head and he's miraculously going to recover. <laughs> he's done been shot in the head 600 years ago. And he's done recovered and he's sitting in their aisles. Why, why would it say that in Revelation 17 that she is a mother of harlots? Why would it say that? Because they never did change their name. I know some of them are Methodists and Baptists, but they never did change their identity to Jesus Christ because they never baptized in His name. If you
you want to be identified with Him, then take on His name and on His birth. To give us a birthright. We'll never get out of here without a birthright, Brother Kevin. And that comes from the foundation of the world. You may say, you must be enjoying this. I am. Because it comes little by little by little until it is a picture that we can see ourselves in. I'll leave it at that for tonight. I know I'll have to go into part of this again because there's a lot in there to be understood. If you're not getting tired of hearing it, then I'm not getting tired of talking to you about it. Heavenly Father, we're grateful to you, Lord, ever thankful to you that you're so kind to us to give us thoughts and things to come to our mind as we walk in this way of truth, of revelation. Because you, you have spoken that without a revelation, then the people go wild. Help us, Father. Lead us in the right direction. And keep us by your great hand of mercy. Father, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. May God bless you. Brother Ellen, for that. Appreciate the word of the Lord. Just let us know we're getting close to the coming of the Lord. I say that all the time, but I mean that. Let us all stand. If you have a need and you'd like to come for a prayer, then feel free as Brother David comes. There's a heaven to gain. There's a heaven to gain. And a hell to shun. The way is still straight. There's a race to be run. You can live as you please. But you must pay the cost And the highway to heaven Still goes by the cross Oh, there's a heaven to gain And a hell 
the sun Oh, the way you still stray There's a race to be run You can live as you please But you must pay the call And the highway to heaven Still goes by the cross Oh, there's a heaven to gain And a hell to shun Oh, the way is still straight There's a race to be run You can live as you please But you must pay the cost And the highway to heaven Still goes by the cross Brother Goins called in and wanted prayer for his wife he he is afraid he is going to have to take her to the hospital so let us remember this need and remember all of your brothers and sisters in prayer and remember the service Thursday night and come back with expectation brother David would you dismiss us Amen. May the Lord bless you.